Come on to my house, my house. Hi, this is my house, our house, the Chum City Building. It's a broadcast operation that's literally unique in the world. The one and only to run without conventional studios, and we'd like you to come on down and watch us work. Come on to my house, my house. It's our 18th anniversary, and in celebration, we're opening up our doors to all of you. You'll see and be able to talk to the showmakers. Hey, guys, how goes? And the stars. How you doing? How you doing, Michael? All right. You could even appear on Much Music, City Falls, MT or FT. So come on down, but let us know you're coming. Call Francine, 5915757 for more info. Friday at 10.30. Could you use $5,000? Rebecca DeBonet marries her way to freedom. And God created woman, the full version, shown in its entirety, 1030 Friday. Serious is the fate of the earth. Unserious is shopping. This weekend, FT brings out the best from this year, including a day with Bill Blast. It seems rather strange to me that I've never shown my collection before in Canada. But on the other hand, I've never been invited before. Plus the politics of Chickalina. No, but I, I love it. Learn the secrets of art dealer Ivan Carr. To be charming and aggressive. And if you can be, extremely good looking. And dressing up in Ungaro. Fashion television, Saturday at 7.30, Sunday at 6.30. You could be in for La Big Three. A trip for you and your significant other to La La Land, Los Angeles. Plus, we're also giving away tons of ear-tingling Sony Discmans. To win, just watch City TV's great movies, 10.30 Friday and Saturday nights. When you see La Contest on the screen, write down the time, date, and La Flick you saw it in. Mail it with your name, address, and phone number to City TV. You could be off to the City of Angels, courtesy of City TV, Labatt Drive. Canada AM, weekdays on CTV. CFTO TV, Channel 9 in Toronto. A CTV News Update, brought to you by Esso Associates and Imperial Oil. Here is Lloyd Robertson. Good evening. An Alitalia DC-9 with 46 people on board crashes in Switzerland on approach to Zurich Airport. No survivors are found. Dr. Henry Morgenthaler opens his abortion clinic in St. John's, Newfoundland over objections of city council. Prime Minister Mulroney reassures Iraqi hostages' wives he's trying to free their husbands. Back after this. Tomorrow on ENG. You are the very best there is. Has the time come for Anne and Mike to admit? What about you and him? She would make a great team. Their attraction to each other is more than professional. Or is it just the heat of the moment? If you're trying to get at me for last night, don't do it like this. Amazing! You're actually admitting something happened. ENG, tomorrow night at 9 on CTV. CTV News with Lloyd Robertson, next. CFTO TV, Channel 9 in Toronto. In tonight's news, the battle for Downing Street, a new challenge to Thatcher rule. Abortion showdown in St. John's. Henry Morgenthaler is rejected by protesters and city council. And showbiz goes to war. Warming up a Christmas tour for Canada's troops overseas. CTV News with Lloyd Robertson. Good evening. One of the most prominent political figures on the world stage is in a very shaky position tonight. Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady, the strong-willed, unflappable leader of Britain, is holding on to her position by a thread. One of her former cabinet ministers, Michael Heseltine, formally announced his candidacy for her job today. And that forces the Conservative Party to choose between them. As Roger Smith reports, even if Thatcher survives the vote, the battle will leave its scars. And I will make a full statement later today. Ever since he walked out of cabinet in 1986, Michael Heseltine has kept up his ambitious campaigning, all the while insisting he would never challenge Thatcher. Now he's changed his mind, saying only he can save his divided and struggling party. I would have a better chance now, a better prospect now, than Mrs. Thatcher, of leading the Conservatives into a fourth electoral victory, and thus avoiding the ultimate calamity of a Labour government. 
His first promise, an immediate review of the controversial poll tax. With a defiant Thatcher pledging to fight and win, the corridors of Parliament became the centre of feverish lobbying. She has brought this upon herself, and perhaps to go now with what grace is left would be much easier for all of us than having to prolong the agony. It's going to be divisive. Uh, it's not going to prove anything in my view. Uh, I don't think Michael Heseltine will win, and consequently, what's the point of it? It's happened, and he's been pushed into doing something he's been swearing he wouldn't do for many months. I think it's a great pity and a great mistake, and I don't think it will do him in the long term, I'm afraid, any good. How on earth? If Thatcher once seemed a sure bet, Jeffrey Howe has certainly changed the odds. His dramatic attack may be a key factor in swinging undecided Tories away from the Prime Minister. Thatcher loyalists answer back by playing the golf card. A world crisis, they say, is no time to change Prime Ministers. But Heseltine insists he would be just as tough. There is absolutely no distinction at all between me and the government on the issues to do with the Gulf policy. It may seem astounding that there's such a serious threat against a sitting prime minister who has never lost an election. Yet the once unthinkable now seems a real possibility that Thatcher may not survive this challenge and that even if she does, she may be too wounded to stay on much longer. Roger Smith, CTV News, London. The voting procedure for party leader is very different in Britain than it is here. There won't be a leadership convention with thousands of voting delegates. Only conservative MPs will be allowed to vote. Then a complicated formula will be used to decide who wins. If there is no clear winner, according to that formula, a second ballot will be held on November 27th. If that happens, it's possible other candidates besides Hesseltine may decide to enter the race. But it's Hesseltine the anti-Thatcher forces have their hopes on. They believe he has what it takes to oust a sitting prime minister, something that rarely happens. With more about who Heseltine is and what he stands for, here's Philip Winslow. He's 57 years old and a self-made millionaire. Michael Heseltine made his fortune in real estate, then in publishing. He decided early to go into politics when he was president of the student union at Oxford. He told friends he'd be prime minister by the age of 55. As a young MP, he earned the nickname Tarzan by swinging the commons mace over his head to protest Labour MPs singing their socialist anthem. He became environment secretary in Thatcher's first cabinet. Later, as defense secretary, he still had his sights on the top job. Britain's deployment of cruise missiles brought popular protests. Heseltine showed himself a true blue Tory by attacking Labour Party leader Neil Kinnock over the issue. Mr. Kinnock, fight the extremists on the essential defense interests of this country. He is the extremist. It was a troubled British helicopter company that threw Heseltine's political career off course. Heseltine wanted a European consortium to bail out the company. Thatcher wanted to keep it British. Heseltine resigned from the government in protest. Unlike Thatcher, he's always favored speedy moves towards European Union, even plans for a common European currency. He says it's the best way to make British business competitive. Residents in Heseltine's Henley riding are divided on whether he's a suitable replacement for Thatcher, although some of them would be quite pleased just to see her go. I think the general opinion amongst ordinary people is that she's had her day and it's over. She's had it. This poll tax has killed me, for one. Heseltine may be a bit behind in his lifelong goal to become prime minister, but he's closer than he's ever been. Now he's staking his whole political career on this challenge. Philip Winslow, CTV News, London. An Alitalia DC-9 crashed tonight on a hillside about 10 kilometers outside of Zurich, killing all 46 people on board. The jet went down on its final approach to the Zurich airports. Reports say it was raining at the time and was a little foggy, but conditions weren't especially bad. One eyewitness says the plane was flying dangerously it low. pretty close. And then um, the pilot obviously, shortly after it had gone over us, opened all the throttles because it, uh, it really blasted after that.
Um, and then 10, 15 seconds later, there was a bang. Investigators still have no idea why the plane went down. One of the last lingering disputes from the Second World War was formally put to rest today. Poland and Germany signed a treaty confirming their common border along the Oder and Nisse rivers. The agreement means Germany gives up any claim to more than 100,000 square kilometers of what was historically German land, former territory that was added to Poland after the war. In some places, the new border is more than 200 kilometers west of the pre-war boundary. The agreement was signed by German Foreign Minister Hans Dietrich Genscher and his Polish counterpart Krzysztof Skubiszewski. Both men predicted that the treaty would pave the way toward a new bilateral relationship. And in Berlin today, militant squatters continued to battle it out with police. At least 300 people were arrested and 15 others were taken to hospital after what officials called the worst outbreak of violence in 10 years. Police smashed through barricades with bulldozers and armored trucks. The squatters, protesting their forced eviction, hurled cobblestones, looted shops, and set fires. And this is rare, considering where this story comes from. The quiet life of a village in New Zealand was shattered today by violence. A man armed with a semi-automatic rifle opened fire on his neighbors. He shot children, women, and men. Eleven of them died. Police described the 35-year-old David Gray as absolutely ruthless. Gray set fire to a neighbor's house, then he shot people who came to help. Police killed Gray when they stormed the house where he was hiding, 24 hours after the horror began. Still to come in our news tonight, the personal touch. The Prime Minister calms fears over hostages in the Persian Gulf. We have a lot of personal information we're very pleased with. And a new abortion clinic runs into a roadblock in Newfoundland, but Henry Morgenthaler promises a fight. Those three members of parliament trying to get to Iraq to plead for the Canadian hostages had to cool their heels again today. They've been waiting since last week for permission from Baghdad, so today they tried a new approach. They went to the Iraqi embassy in Ottawa, conservative Bob Corbett, liberal Lloyd Axworthy, and New Democrat Sven Robinson. The ambassador told them they'd have to wait for permission, but not to worry, their applications were being dealt with at the highest level. In Edmonton, Prime Minister Mulroney was meeting with the wives of five of the hostages. They've been pressing the government to intervene for their husbands, but the Prime Minister gave no commitment, only encouragement. At any rate, both the wives and Mulroney seem to come away happy. Jim O'Connell reports. Well, I'm happy to be with you. We're, we're more than pleased to be here. Today. These five Alberta wives were looking to the Prime Minister for reassurance more than anything, searching for hope that their husbands would come home alive. It's been a tough one for all of you, I know. We are reassured. Their husbands are oil workers stuck in Iraq. And while the women were given no guarantees as to when they'll be released, they said Mulroney told them enough to ease their minds. We have a lot of personal information we're very pleased with. We had a very good meeting. The Prime Minister wouldn't comment on exactly what he told the women. Thank you very much. But later on a local talk show, he spoke about their greatest fear. But, you know, they have uh, the great human worries of not having their husbands here. And the, the fear and the apprehension that if a shooting war broke out, that uh, they could be in, in very serious jeopardy. One of those hostages is Ralph Minns, now in Baghdad, hoping that Canadian officials will soon get him out. They're being treated very well. The external affairs is doing all they can, and they're very encouraged, and they're very happy. Mulroney also announced how he plans to supply more funding to the military effort in the Gulf. There will have to be cutbacks to other government departments in order to come up with enough cash. So we've cut a great deal of the fat out, but we can do, we can do more to cover the costs of the extra burden that we're going to bear in the Middle East. The Prime Minister also dispelled rumors that Canada may send more forces to the Middle East. He wouldn't rule anything out, 